Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Anatomy of a Template Part 2. So in Part 1, I explained to you guys and showed you in depth what my template is. I have all this analog gear. I have, you know, 64 ins and outs happening, 32 outputs to summing, etc. So a lot of folks said, dude, you can't, you know, we don't have that. We just have the computer, but we have a lot of plugins. How would you do it? So I kind of reported everything over and set it up to show you an all plugin, all digital in the box version. So here we go. So this is my whole setup. Now you notice everything's grayed out, so it's all deactivated. Now there's way more than you need. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is it's, it's there and it's available to you when you want to get at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make everything active. So I'll talk while it's activating. So I'll explain the basic signal flow. We have at the top, we have a track that's a print track that we record our mix onto. We have an aux that feeds that. And on that aux is all our mix bus processing and metering and reference tracks to compare to. Then feeding into that is all my aux submasters. So you could have an aux submaster for drums, one for keyboards, one for guitars, one for crunchy guitars, one for clean guitars, as many as you want, and I'll show you what I have. They feed also to a mix bus, which goes into that mix aux. Then I have VCAs that control groups of them, so I can make global moves. So I have a VCA, master VCA for everybody. I have a VCA controlling all the drums, one controlling all the percussion, one for the guitars, on and on. The VCAs are great because you can mute them and make stem mixes. You can mute them and make track mixes. You can solo them to just make a cappella mixes. You can make global moves with those. And they don't affect your gain structure, your compression, anything. Then I have the individual tracks. So in this case, on my individual tracks, you might say, well, why do you need individual tracks? Well, it's easy. On my individual tracks, I have plugins that I know I always use. So for instance, if I have two plugins that I always use, like basically like an SSL channel strip, the Brainworks one is always on pretty much all of those tracks. So I set up everything like a console and I work on it that way. And I can get my blends there. What's cool about this is I keep my aux masters at zero and I can do all my automation on the tracks, the audio tracks, or on the VCAs. Then I have all my effects tracks. And the other thing, that's really important is my sidechain. So the sidechain is parallel compression and EQ to blend in for tonal shaping and for feel. So let's take a look. There's a lot of things here. So the first thing you can learn to do in your template is make use of these memory marker locations, right? So right now I have the whole mix. So let's say I don't want to see all of that. You can, you can use this not only for arrangement. So the obvious thing would be verse, chorus, pre-chorus, on and on. Here I use it for this show track visibility. So if you take a look, see it says track visibility is checked and my track heights are checked. And you can go deep, you can do group enables, you can do zooming, all that stuff. So right now, this is my just my mix track. So here's my mix print track. That's where I record into. It's fed, the input is mix print. And here's my mix aux. The output of this is the mix prints, so it feeds into there. And the input of it is just what I call mix, which is the bus that everything flows down into this. And within here, I have my mix bus processing. Uh, the UAD API 560 gives a nice analog feeling, even if you don't touch the EQ, which I usually don't. Uh, I kept the things I kept in my other template, which is this uh, VCA comp and the Wells mix guy a Pro Q3 uh, for if I want to do filtering or mid-side or if there's any weird stuff, which I probably usually don't use it. Manly Massive Passive to boost certain areas to help. Uh, the same thing I had in my other template, the Brainworks uh, Digital EQ, which I have ready for automation, the width control, because I like to widen parts of the song. And you can do mid-side with that. And then I have my Pro L Fab Filter. I had a couple of dB and it's just mainly to keep me from hitting the roof. Then I have my adapter, which is over here on this window. 
and that's always ready. You can see this button is not clicked, so it's always visible if I open another plugin. And I didn't load up all my reference tracks, but what I usually do is I go in here and I load audio file, and I can load up reference tracks for me to refer to, and then this matches the volume. So I can AB between them for listening, and I can AB between them to look at the spectrum analyzer and frequency and compression and stereo with curves. So there you go so any fades or automation i want to do like a fade out i would do it right on this track any bumps i want to do to the mix i do it there so now next step so probably somewhere down at the end of the mix i want to do some global moves like let's say i want to make all the verses a little quieter or let's say maybe i want to make uh the, i want to bump the downbeats of the choruses or i want the bridge to be a little hotter or some things to happen to bring some dynamics. I don't need to look at all those tracks. I just want to look at the VCAs, which is where all that can happen, and the two bus, because I like to check to make sure I'm not blowing up anything. Then the next thing in my mix chain is uh, all my side chain. In my analog setup, I have a API outboard that I use for all the drums and bass. I have, uh, in my other setup, I have this exact same input, a Neve compressor and an SPL widener that I use for all the instruments on the sides, keyboards, pads, etc. The sidechain C is a 1176, which gives it a little pump. The sidechain drum crush is for the drums, not the cymbals necessarily. Sometimes the room, sometimes not. And that's my distressor plugin. But what I use this for is, uh, like for instance, I automate these a lot. Like I might have some of them off, or I might have them kick up in the choruses or in the bridge if I want to blow it up. Sidechain T is tape, and it's an Ampex tape emulation. Sidechain G is for guitars. I like the LA3A and a Pultec. Can't go wrong with those for guitars. Sidechain G2 is another look or a combination. Billy Decker electric plug-in. All of his stuff is awesome. And another Pultec on his. Then I like to send my kick and my snare to one compressor to crush them up on their own. And that's pretty much the DBX. And then I have a kick and a bass compressor, which is the Shadow Hills. So I send the kick and the snare into that and that gives it like a glue. And all of these are sent via aux sends. So I send these from my aux submasters, and they're always set at zero as well. And then these are lower, and I can ride these up or ride them down. I have a secondary kick and bass crush, which I like the... Then I have a side chain for the bass, uh, 1176, if I want to send it in for some character, for some pump. The Decker plug-in, it's set a little different than the other one. Now for lead vocals, I have various side chains. So let's let's take a look at those. The lead vocal side chains are, I have an 1176 for some grit. I have a Fairchild for a different amount of uh, pump or grit. Just Abbey Road gives a nice saturation to it. And then my last one is the Billy Decker vocal plug-in. So these can, can be used in different combinations depending upon the song and what, what the song uh, does and how, it, and how it feels or needs to feel. Then I have a, a, a side chain for the background vocals, which is the Billy Decker plug-in. So you see I can bounce around. So now I have, I have a, a Fairchild that I use for one of my background vocal side chains. Like in this case, I have my side chains and I have my aux submasters and my effects. So let's go back and talk about that. So let's start with the drums. So if I click on that, I have my drum aux masters at the top. So let's delve into those. On my aux submasters, I'm getting an input from a bus that says kicks. So all my kick drums, audio, have an output kicks and they feed this aux submaster. And all the aux submaster outputs feed the mix bus that go up to that, that uh, two, two track processing for the mix bus. So let's look in. I have 1176 and a Pultec. I have the same thing for the snare, set a little different. Toms, I have an SSL EQ, plus I have a pull tech, and I have an SPL Vitalizer to spread them. Then I have Drums M, which is Drums Metal. I use this Fatso to sometimes tame the snare. I have this Amic EQ if I want high end, or this um, Sound Toys EQ, which I really like. Drum Rooms, I have the Arouser for a more crush on those if I want to use it. So that was all my auxes, so now I'm gonna to go to the drum audio. So what I do on all my audio tracks, so here's kick, kick sample, kick sample ambient. So on the drums, I have an auto align to align the drums. 
And pretty much on every audio track, I'll have a Pro Q2 ready to go, set up to filter out whatever I need. And I'll have a SSL channel. So it's pretty simple. Now, if you'll notice, I'll back up a little bit. On these AUX submasters, you'll see all these sends. So, so the kick, you'll see there's very little sending on the on the audio. So on the, on the left over here is all the subs, right? So they send to all the side chains and they're and they're all set at zero. And then they send, you know, also to a reverb if needed. So when I bring in a track, let's say, I'll import this into my mix ready session. And then I'll just move the audio from from wherever it was over to the kick. Now, if I did a lot of work on that audio and I like it and I already have blends, then I won't use these audio tracks and I'll just make the output of the ones I had go to the appropriate send and then I can rebalance from there. It's pretty It's pretty simple. It's a lot of work setting this up the first time, but it's it's cool and it works. So like I have a view where I can see all the drums plus the submasters and you know, you've noticed the color coding thing. And then I have another one with the effects. So the effects are down here, things I like to use on the drums. I have, a, I have this Valhalla Vintage Verb set for like a tile room, which is a short PCM70 cop, the PCM70 used to have. A 480 chamber, which I like. The, um, this Verb Suite Slate, which is a, a copy of the Sony reverb, which is great. The CLA preset, it's great just the way it is. And this Revibe, which is a little bit longer. It kind of reminds me of like one of the Yamaha reverbs, you know, from the old days, the ambient setting. So, so that, you know, that's cool. That's all the drums. Now we'll flip to the basses. So now we're seeing the basses and we're seeing um, the auxes and the audio. So the audio you'll see over here is all turned down or off. So usually I have a, a DI bass, you know, and I have the auto align because I'll align these to the kick and then I, I have amps. So I have a B15 for the lows. I have an SVT for the mids and the growl. And if I don't want the SVT, I can use the Sans amp. And then I have um, one of these. So I have one of these uh, Howard Benson amp modelers, STL tonality for dirt. And then I have after them, like I said, a Pro Q2 and an SSL channel after each one. Then they go over here and they feed instead of one bass aux. I found that that wasn't usually enough. So I have my main bass aux is I use this Billy Decker bass plug-in to taste. I have this EQ is great for bass. I have it boosting some low end. 1176, everybody uses those on bass. Uh, if, if after that it needs some help, I have the Pro Q2. Uh, I have a second one of these, which is probably a mistake. And then I have a Pro Q3. And they're super fast and easy to use. And once again, all the side chains and effects on the basses are set and ready to go. So then I also have a bass two, which is a different look at the full range bass sound. Then I have a bass high. Now what's different about the bass high is I've, uh, I've cut out all the lows and boosted the highs. I have this guy on for attack. This one's boosted more highs and so is this one. And then I also have a uh, another 1176. Now I can I can mute any of these at any time. And then I have a, a bass low, which is kind of the opposite. Usually this will just be like over there somewhere. And that, that rolls off all the highs. And then I have this guy boosting all the lows. Then if I want to add some sub bass, uh, I'll add this in, which is just your typical sub harmonic generator. It's great. Then we'll move on. Acoustic guitars. Uh, this is just the AUX Submasters, because usually what happens is I play it, I double it. There might be multiple ones. So I would just take them from the session and assign them to the, the input, which says, uh, which I didn't do yet. So I have to set up a bus for that. But it would be an acoustic guitar input. So you see, these are all my all my inputs over here. So let's say, you could, actually, this would be a good thing to do right now. Uh, so since I didn't do it, if you were doing it at home, you would just go in here, you'd go to your buses. And I want it to be near the electric guitars so i'll set up a new path stereo i'll call it ag and that's done so now i'll go over here and set the two of these if i together and that's done so now they're they'll flow downstream to the right place now there's some specific things i always have ready on the uh on the acoustic guitars the Soothe plugin is great for taking out harsh frequencies. I think it was mainly made for vocals, but I dig it on this, on like hi-hats and stuff like that. Um, 
So I have two different ones set up. So let's let's look at the first one. I'll activate everything, and you can check it out. So next thing, I have the Billy Decker acoustic, which is all this stuff is really good. I have API uh, 2500, which is a great compressor for acoustic guitars. And I probably have too many things on. So none of these things are really on all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. This uh, Mog from uh, Brainworks Plugin Alliance has this air band that's great. And it has this uh, somewhere in the mids, like 2K area compressor, single band compressor, which is usually where there's trouble in that area. And then I have an EQ, oops, sorry, a pull tech at the ready if I need a different type of high end thing happening. And then I have a similar setup over here on the second one, but I have a different EQ on it. So if you want, if you want a different look, you want a different EQ, you want something to have a little more power, you can easily do that. So now over here, I have my electric guitar set up. Most likely in a session, I have to be prepared to have like a crunchy power guitar and maybe three other guitar tracks of varying distortion or ambience. And then one that's more amb more like ambient. So it could be like a volume swell or echoey edge thing, or it could be a tremolo uh, guitar and then uh, one playing lines. So I'm kind of all set up for this over here. These are the audio tracks that you see are, are down, except for this guy should be down. Oh no, that's, that's correct, sorry. So they all have their appropriate side chains set up and ready to go, along with the option of some effects. Let's look at that. So the effects are over here. So I have I have ready to go the side chains, right? And um, actually, it didn't bring in my effects. Okay, we'll have to fix that. So here here's a good way to something to check out. So let's say you've set this all up and you want to have your your effects in this view as well. So I go over to my left here. I highlight my guitar effects. I add them, all right? So they're in there, ready to go. And then if I want to update this, I just hold down Control, click on it, and now it's updated the view. So my guitar effects, I have a guitar rune from Valhalla. Then I have uh, my effects rack. So I have sound toys, which is awesome. I have an eighth note. I have another one set up for dotted eighth, which is a little different. It's a memory man instead of the delay, digital delay, which is, I was trying to go for my PCM 42 thing. And that's a quarter note. And after each of them, I have a filter to take out some high end. And what I did too was these send to the guitar room. So it pushes back the delays into the mix even more. And it puts them in the same space as the guitar. And then I have a flanger in case I want to do any kind of flanging effects anywhere. Let's move on to keyboards. So keyboards. Over here I have some keyboard tracks ready to go. And they're interesting because there's certain things I found that I like. So on the Wurlitzer, I, I kind of like this for some grit to make it sound like it was an amp if somebody has a sample. Uh, these are always on everything. The Pro-Q2 is always there. And I have this option. This is a different sounding EQ. It's a little cleaner. So if, let's say this was a Rhodes and not a, a Wurlitzer. I would, I would use that. Uh, acoustic Piano, I do like that on there. And I have this guy ready and a Pro-Q2. And then on the B3, same thing. I think it needs and likes that distortion. And then I have options of that EQ, which is a little grittier than this one. Now those feed the keyboard sub. So I have an acoustic piano here and, and these have all the reverbs and all their, their side chains. So they're going to that side chain with the knee that's with the spreader. And if I want them to go to, the, they're ready to go to the tape and the side chain C is available if I want it, but I usually shut it off because sometimes you want different things to go into different places. So then I have pads synth strings and all that stuff. So I have a few things ready on the pads and synths. This Waves uh, one knob plugin is cool. It pumps in time. You can invert the phase. They make a one knob filter. So you can automate the filter if you like. It's got a lot of cool things ready to go on there. And then this Brower plugin, Motion plugin, which can which can pan left to right, pan forward and back. So if you have a static pad and you wanna have some, some things moving around, that's a great thing to have. And on the string, sometimes I'd like to put a little spreader on it. And these guys, so I have a hall ready to go, Valhalla Hall, and an Abbey Road plate reverb from Waves. So 
So, you know, keep this in mind when you're when you're doing your thing. Like, like this is a $50 plug-in. So all the Valhalla reverbs are great. So you can get the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which covers a lot of ground, and you could get the Valhalla Room, which is great for guitars and other things. And for 100 bucks, you have, like, killer reverbs. And then, like, that Revive comes with Pro Tools. I use that. And then, like, the Pro Q 2 and 3 are awesome, but, like, there's a plug-in right in Pro Tools, the EQ 3, that does that. I love, love, love the sound work, uh, sound toys, any, everything they make and their delays are awesome. But you could, you could use the internal delays that come with Pro Tools and put the filter after them and modulate them. They have plugins for that. So like you could buy the Valhalla stuff and buy like the, the SSL from Brainworks, which is killer. And that could be, you could put those on every channel and you're, you're doing the same thing kind of I do. I've just shot out everything and tried everything. You know, but if you're a guy at home doing it, you don't want to go crazy. I mean, the, the SSL was on sale for $49, which is ridiculous. Cool, so let's go to vocals. Lead vocals. All right, so let's take a look. I have two lead vocal auxes. So one says LV, just for lead vocal right here, and one says LVT and quad. So if you'll notice, the LVT and quad is a stereo out so in other words over here right you'll see these pan left and right so that's the lead vocal triple and the quad so a common thing might be there's a lead vocal alone in the verses maybe in the pre-chorus he's doubled so the double is centered right below it and then maybe in the choruses that double stays in the center and then it blows up wide with a left and right sound of a doubling before we even get to harmonies and then, for instance, in a verse, like the second verse or some of the verses, there might be a harmony with it. So that's over here. And uh, I split these out. Like, so lead vocal would just be either a continuous performance or for the verse. Lead vocal PC would be for the pre. Lead vocal C for the chorus. So why am I doing that? Mainly because, let's say I want to EQ and compress differently in those different parts of the song. And most definitely, they're going to have different levels. So rather than have to engage all this automation and manage that, and if I change my mind later, I, you know, now I just pull everything down, I put it back up, I reset my blends. So I keep them separated like that for now. And if somebody sends me one track, I usually separate them. And, and this also means like I might want different effects in the verse. Like I might not want all this reverb. I might want a flange or something light or a doubler, different kind of sound. So it's, I can just put it right on the track instead of on the aux master, and, and then I don't have to worry about automating stuff. Then I have side chains for the, for the lead vocal. Uh, we discussed those before. And now over here, you see this grayed out, all of these? These are the same effects ends that I have on the aux master. So if I have a rock song, and it's really... So like if I have a rock tune, and I don't... The reverb and effects on the aux master might be enough and having these dry and pushing them forward might give it the presence I want. But maybe on a ballad, when I push these up, it gives me a great tone or it gives me this feeling of movement, but it's too in your face. So I have these here. They're ready to go. When they're inactive, they don't hurt anybody. They don't take up any processing. So background vocal effects. And the background vocals. So I have no audio tracks in here because chances are every session is different. I might have a bunch of background vocals for, for all these different sections and and I might have big stacks. So I don't want to have all that in here to deal with. When, the, when that comes in, I just use those. I assign them to this out. So I have BV1, BV pad, BV shout, BV gang. Why? Okay, BV1 is like a general background vocal setup. Most of the time I go there first. If, if there's a background vocal bunch in the chorus and I want it to be different in the bridge, I can just duplicate that one. BV pad, when you have oohs and ahs, you might want different kind of EQ. Might, you might want it to be silkier. You might want the compression to be like a, a LA-3A instead of 1176. So those options are available, and the reverb and the effects may be way different. BV shout is a totally different ball game. Um, you could have a different reverb, like I have this reverb for background vocals, and I have this for chorusing the background vocals, whereas the lead is going to a plate. and So I might not want those in the same place. And BV Gang is pretty much for the shouting type of gang vocals, 
and on this one I might want distortion. I really like the Saturn plugin as multiband distortion. Now you'll see this GEQ down here. I have this ready to go, and, and you can see this is always automated. Uh, green means it's ready for automation. So that's if I want to telephone anything, telephone the vocals, you know, I can put it on, I can automate it, it's there. You know, every like six or seven tunes, there's an effect like that. So why not have it ready? You know, it's, it's just common sense. And then we covered the, the two different looks. So from there, we have the full mix. And we'll look over here. So that's a lot of stuff, but you know, it's, you do the work, you spend, you spend a half a day doing this on your own and you're ready to go when you mix. And then like in my case, everything is always inactive. So when I bring this in, I open the session, it comes up just like that. Super. There's one thing I have not showed you guys in my setup here. I have these two reverbs ready to go at all times. They're muted right now. One says cello room and one says stadium. And this is cello room, like the big cello studio. And one is Wembley Stadium. It could be any IR in here. That's a pretty cool one. So the, they both have the same input blend room so that's a bus so a lot of times i want to make everybody feel like they're in the same place and sometimes some songs want to sound giant and big so i use these two for that effect the stadium would be for the giant big stuff and the cello room would be for a bunch of folks playing in a room now they can change it could be it could be uh, any ir and alta verb is great you can do anything you want so i could i could go in here and select all kinds of things. You could pick, you know, any kind of stadiums. You could pick soccer arenas. You could you could go back and and you could look at all these different options. Churches, cathedrals, clubs, if you wanted to have that vibe. So this is very helpful in a lot of cases where I need the band to sound like, you know, it belongs together in a room. So, you know, keep that in mind. You can have a, a blend reverb for everybody. So there's back to the full mix. And we'll see it on this side. So there you go. Take your take your day or half a day, set this all up, and then make it inactive and have it waiting. Another cool thing is you can make sub templates. Like if you just want to use the effects, just have the effects in their own template. Delete everything else and have them there. Same thing with your production. Like if you find a certain way you do pre-production, make a template for that it doesn't have to be just for mixing i have multiple templates now a good point to make about this is your template does not have to be this complicated to start you could start with a simple one and then what i always do is if i find i use something three or four times over and over i make a note about it and then i import it into the template and i work it in and, it, and it's always there so keep all that in mind happy mixing hope you enjoyed uh please subscribe give us a thumbs up that would be great. We really need your help and support, and we appreciate it. Hit me with a comment or a question. I'll try to get back to you. Thanks again.